location in the Quran is Madian. God explains that Moses escaped from the Pharaoh and fled to Madian before he was chosen as a messenger. Moses lived in, worked at, and got married in Madian. God says in the Quran and to Madian, their brother Shoaib. And it is known that the grave and the mountain of Prophet Shoaib is in Yemen. This establishes that Madian is located in Yemen, not in Saudi or northern Hejaz, as it is thought to be in some history books. Madian also has the Mosque of Prophet Shoaib, which is located in the middle of Oslat al Manar, on the line connecting Sa'na in the provinces of Ab and Taz in Yemen. The language in which Moses used to communicate with the people of Madian further strengthens the argument that Madian is located in Yemen. The Quran describes how Moses was able to speak at length with the people of Madian without a translator. Refer to the conversation as cited in the Quran. As soon as Moses reached the well in Madian, exhausted from his journey, he was taken by a scene. At this well, men were gathering and all their focus was on giving water to their sheep and cattle. Two girls were standing modestly on the side, unable to compete with the men to get water for their sheep. He asked them, as narrated in the Quran, what's wrong? In other words, why are you not getting water for your sheep? They replied, we cannot do so until the men leave, as our father is an old man. In other words, they could not go and fight with the men, so they were waiting. Moses helped them to get water. The Quran says he helped them feeding their cattle and sheep, and then he left to the shadow and said, O oh God, I am thankful for all your blessings to me. Then one of the two girls came back to him and asked him to meet her father in order to thank him. As narrated in the Quran, one of them came walking modestly and said, Our father is inviting you in order to reward you for what you've done. Moses went to meet the girl's father and he told him the story of his escape from Pharaoh. As he came to the old man, he told him the story. So the old man replied, Do not worry, you are saved from an oppressive people. The old man asked him to marry one of his daughters and to work with him in farming. I want you to marry one of my daughters to the end of the verse. This dialogue shows that the people in northern Sudan, or to be precise in the southern part of Mizr before the 1899 borders, the place that Moses used to live in under the rule of the Pharaoh, and the people in Majin, the place that Moses escaped to, spoke the same language. The language they spoke is the southern Arabian language that is known to linguists as the Hamarian language. This southern Arabian language was both the language of Yemen and Abyssinia and is also referred to as the Giyas language. If anything, this explains why Moses fled from northern Sudan to Madian or Yemen, a place which shared a common language. It's important to understand here that the Arabian language can be classified into the Southern Arabian language and the Northern Arabian language. The Southern Arabian language or the Hamerian language, which belongs to the south, the southern part of Miz like the Northern Sudan and Abyssinian highlands, the southern part Arabian Peninsula like Yemen. While the Northern Arabian language, Al Fusa, as the linguists call it, belongs to the northern part of the Arabian Peninsula, which is currently known as Saudi Arabia. Both languages share similar origins and people speaking either language could perfectly understand one another. Now we agree that Moses was born and raised at the southern part of Mizr and spoke the language of its people, the same language the Pharaoh and Israelites spoke. The Quran says, and we never sent a messenger except by the tongue of his people so he can illustrate to them the right so God can guide whom he wants. He is the most wise. If we dig deeper into the origins of the Israelites in Miz, we ought to read the story of Joseph, the son of the prophet Jacob and the father of the Israelites. We all know that Joseph was thrown in the well by his brothers and was brought into Miz as a slave. It is clearly stated in the Quran that the man who bought him from Mizra paid in the dirham, the currency used by the people in this part of Miz. Knowing which region in Miz at the time dealt in dirhams will also lead us to figure out where Joseph was sold and whether the caravan entered Mizra from the north towards Sinai, coming from the Sham, or it entered Mizra from the south towards Abyssinia, coming from the southern Arabian Peninsula. The region that used the dirham at that time was a southern area of the Arabian Peninsula referred to now as Yemen. This implies that Joseph entered Mizra from the southern Arabian Peninsula coming from Yemen, which shows that Israelites are originally Arab Bedouins from the southern Arabian Peninsula. It is worth noting here that the dirham was also used in Abyssinia all the way up to northern Sudan. A shared common currency strengthened the trade between these places. 
Strong commercial ties were also attributed to the use of the same language, which we referred to earlier as the Southern Arabian language or the Hamerian language. Simply put, one language, one currency. Had Joseph been living in Sham and sold in northern Egypt, the buyer would not have paid for him in dirhams, as this was not the currency used in northern Egypt or in Sham. Nevertheless, it is a common misconception that Joseph, his parents and his brothers arrived from Sham to Egypt, indicating that the origins of the Israelites are from Sham. The Quran says on the tongue of Joseph and he got them from the Bedouin area. It's impossible that the people in Egypt would refer to the people in Sham as Bedouins because Bedouins were the inhabitants of the Arabian Peninsula at that time. Moreover, immigration of the Bedouins from the southern Arabian Peninsula to the southern part of Miz was a common practice at that time. In fact, a large number of inhabitants of Yemen immigrated to the southern part of Miz, now called North Sudan, through Abyssinia and settled there in the south after the destruction of Mareb Dam. The connection between Yemen in the southern Arabian Peninsula and Abyssinia is strong and goes back to BC. The two places shared strong ties and movements between their inhabitants. Southern Arabs immigrated to the African coast of Abyssinia and formed their own settlements there. Also, Africans immigrated to the southern Arabian Peninsula and even ruled it several times. This kind of immigration continued until Ptolemies ruled and had control over the Red Sea. Obviously, this two-way immigration led to the unification of languages between the different nations. That's why the Southern Arabian language was the most popular language in both Abyssinia and Yemen. Furthermore, when early Muslims emigrated to Abyssinia, escaping the oppression of Quraysh, they met al najashi the ruler of Abyssinia. The companion Jaffa min Abi Taleb read to al najashi from Surat Mayam in the presence of the priests, and while al najashi was listening to Surat Mayam, he burst into tears and his companions cried as well. A verse was then revealed, and as they hear what has been revealed to the Prophet, you can see their eyes full of tears from what they knew was the truth. The key question here is how did al Nagashi and the priests understand the language of the Quran when they were speaking Abyssinian while Jaffa was speaking the Northern Arabian language? This proves to you that the language of Abyssinia at that time was the same language being used in the Southern Arabian Peninsula, Yemen, and that the Northern and Southern Arabian languages share the same origins and that as mentioned earlier, the people who speak both languages can understand one another. In summary, southern Miz, now northern Sudan, as known in ancient times, shared the same language with the people of Abyssinia and those of the southern Arabian peninsula, Yemen. This language is the southern Arabian language. Also, the dirham is the currency of the southern Arabian peninsula, all the way to Abyssinia through the east and north of Sudan. We can now understand that the immigration of Bedouins from the Southern Arabian Peninsula to Southern Miz was a common practice at that time and not limited to the Israelites when Joseph welcomed his brothers and parents into Miz. All this proves that Moses spoke the same language of the Pharaoh and that the escape of Moses from the Pharaoh in northern Sudan to the south in Madian, Yemen makes perfect sense. To take this one step further, Based on the previous premise, mainly that Abyssinia, Yemen and northern Sudan shared the same language, as well as scientific proof that the first Homo sapien was discovered inside this triangle, specifically in Abyssinia, where the first civilization in the world was located, it shows that the first language humans used was this Southern Arabian language. In a nutshell, the Southern Arabian language is the oldest and first language for humans to know, and it is the origin of all other languages. The Southern Arabian language, or the Hamerian language, continued to spread from Yemen and Abyssinia through immigration to eastern and northern Sudan. And the Giyaz language, or the old Southern Arabian language, evolved after this into three sub-languages, the Amharic language, Ethiopian, and the Tigrinya, Eritrea, and Tarkrate, eastern and northern Sudan. All these languages have significant commonalities and are written using the same alphabet.